Coffee with Crime and Sugar by Shakespeare on AO3, Episode 6, Chapter 2. Midori. Mitsuki gets his attention, nearly making Yuzuku jolt when he remembers that he's still got an uninvited company here with him. Yes? Izuku's ass. The other is looking at him curiously, as if he's trying to pick Izuku apart, or maybe read his mind. And it makes Izuku briefly wonder if that's his quirk. But that thought doesn't stay long, because he's still dead set on Mirasake's quirk, having to do something with his voice. The other scoots a little closer, his body heat very apparent. Or maybe Izuku's just feeling himself burn up? Let me have a bite of whatever you're eating there. He requests. Izuku blinks. Huh? I want to know if it's good before I order mine. Mirsaka merely says. Izuku must have taken too long to say no, because to his stuttering heart's horror, the other opens his mouth expectantly. For what? Izuku to feed him a bite to him? The worst part is, Izuku's actually doing it. Spoon breaking off a piece of pastry, scooping it up, and lifting it to the other's face. Maybe he's unknowingly a masochist, because why else would he be doing this to himself? Hell, he's even holding eye contact, and each second of it feels like he's burning from the inside out. Izuku's hand starts to shake a little, tiny crumbs falling from the spoon, and he swears his heart drops when Mirasakai breaks his own hand up to hold Izuku steady while leaning forward to eat the crummy sweets in front of him. Flatline. That's what's happening to Mizuku right now. His heart is not beating anymore. However, at the sight of Mirasakai's lips wrapping around the spoon, in such a transical fashion, of him slowly pulling it away and licking a stray crumb off the corner of his mouth, all while holding eye contact, it might as well be deliberate shock that starts up Izuku's pulse again. Izuku lets go of the spoon. It clatters onto the table as he pulls away. He pushes his plate towards the other. You can have it. He states before grabbing his laptop, shoving the thing in his computer bag, before getting up to leave. I have to go. He absolutely cannot get a nosebleed right now, which will definitely happen if his neighbor continues to unintentionally, well, that's deliberate, be lewd. A confused sound comes from the back of Mirasaki's throat, surprise in Izuku's eyes in his sudden reaction. But it's not like he could say anything with a mouthful of pastry as Izuku leaves. He feels a little bad when rushing over to the elevator and repeatedly putting the buttons, but as soon as the door closes in, it's as if heart rate actually has a moment to regulate. He leans up against the wall, eyes closing with a sigh, while the thing lifts him to his room. How is he going to deal with this? It's as if the other is actually trying to burrow under his skin. Why, though? Izuku keeps his quirk status a secret for safety reason. But other than his imperfection on his sacred, non-existent, dating resume, there's no reason why anyone would be interested in someone as plain as him. Maybe this is just some sort of game to Mirasakai, like a cat playing with a mouse before it kills it. Izuku grups as the elevator door opens and stumbles out, heading for his apartment door. He's still unsure if his neighbor falls under friend or foe category, and he's not sure if delving any further to find out is safe. Once inside his home, Izuku leans up against the door, much like in the elevator. He really needs some decompression time. Maybe he'll do some translating work to get his mind away from the image of Mirasaki's mouth. Or maybe he'll watch a movie. Or something. Definitely not another crime documentary, though. A tiring sigh. Izuku rubs at his temples. He leans off the door, hand lifting to his shoulder to shove his computer bag. Except, he finds that it's not there like it usually would be, along with his shoulder bare, save for his t-shirt. Just perfect. He forgot to actually grab the thing before rushing off. And now he's going to have to go back down the cafe to retrieve his computer, along with facing his neighbor again. Wonderful. Briefly, he wonders if this counts as some weird form of walk of shame. But that thought doesn't have the chance to linger long, because as soon as he opens the front door and steps out, 
he collides with something solid. The impact, nearly knocking him over, as a thud onto the floor is heard. Izuku's lip hurts. And he wonders if the cut has reopened as he blindly grips his doorframe so he doesn't fall over. Shit. It's hissed out by that deep voice, and it makes Izuku's knees nearly buckle. Shit. Musaka repeats. I'm sorry. There is the feeling of hands on Izuku's shoulder to steady him, strong and warm. Izuku wouldn't be surprised if there were cartoon stars floating around his head as he looks up at the concerned face of his neighbor. You left your laptop, so I was trying to return it to you. Mirsaka explained, looking down at the ground. Fuck. He says under his breath, and that word from his voice makes Izuku's stomach feel hot and fluttery. I'll pay if it's damaged. Izuku looks down and sees that the thing has made a thump on the floor, with both his and Mirasaka's laptop bags. Come to think of it, they share the same brand of bag, a fact that he might have noticed sooner if he weren't distracted by the other's mouth wrapping around the dessert. Think of something else, Izuku. It's... He has to clear his throat. It's fine. If anything, I'll pay for yours if it's damaged. He says while leaning down to pick his computer bag. Thank you for going out of your way to bring it to me. You didn't have to. He says. It's the least I could do. Mirosaka responds while reaching to get his own bag, the strap going over his shoulders. If that's the least, Izuka wonders what the most is. Are you, um, going back down to the cafe? It has to be illegal when the concern on the other man's face morphs into something that is definitely going to be a tease, Izuku is sure. I was planning to, yes. But I think the sweets that you dropped on my doorstep yesterday were better than anything that cafe will have to offer. It's a whole task not to chew on his bottom lip. Doubtful, he murmurs. Anyways, thank you again, and, uh, sorry for running into you twice now? He says while straightening up his posture a bit. He thinks a nap is in order. Right, well... I'll see you around then, Midori, says Mirasakai. The whole encounter leaves Izuku's face warm as he shuts the door again, but that could just be because he ran face first into a solid chest just a minute ago. Jeez, Izuku needs to stop making a fool of himself in front of his mysterious, haughty neighbor. Sighing, he locks up all the deadbolts, finding comfort in each reassounding click. He wonders if Mirasaki can hear them from the elevator down the hall but it's doubtful. A nap definitely sounds nice right about now, but Izuku is so keyed up, and the thought of running into Mirasaki downstairs if he were to go for a run does not sound promising. With a sigh, Izuku sets the laptop bag on the couch, unzipping the top to check if the thing is okay, after taking a tumble to the floor. But once the top flat is moved aside for him to pull it out, he pauses while looking at the metallic, icy blue interior of the computer. Izuku's laptop is a sleek, boring gray, not blue. Oh dear. This is Mirasaki's laptop. There was a clear mix-up when he dropped both bags earlier, and that means that the other man still has his computer. It's not like Izuku's too concerned with that. He has triple security measures on the device. So after two failed password attempts, it shuts down and needs an entirely new one. There is no safety measure, too far for things that Izuku does. He should go back and return this, or maybe Mirasaki will figure out what has happened and just bring Izuku's back himself. Either way, he's gonna have to see him again, which is a blessing and a curse, though he's not sure which of the two reigns over the other. He eyes a laptop, a strange curiosity going over him. How long until Mirasaki notices that Izuku has this? The man will go back to the cafe, maybe order a coffee and something sweet. He'll chat with a few cats, then open up his computer bag to notice that he has Izuku's. By then, his coffee and snack will arrive. He'll finish those before coming back up to retrieve his laptop. That would be approximately 17 minutes, give or take. Izuku fingers twitch once before opening up the thing, watching as the screen lights up, the lock screen displaying a wash of purple behind the password bar. Okay, Izuku assumes he's got more than two tries, but if... After a couple, nothing budges. 
He'll call it quits and act like he didn't try and snoop through his neighbor's computer. He moves the cursor to the password hint option. Cutest cat is all it says. You've got to be kidding. Ragdoll. He types and hits enter. Incorrect password. He sighs. He should have thought it would be that easy. Well, he did say he'd try twice before giving up. Just for no reason, he types in ragdoll123, and then the search bar is replaced by a loading icon. For real? This guy seriously needs a stronger password. I'm sorry, but your password is so horrid, Mirasakai. Or should I say Hitoshi? Um, I don't think the pat, the, the, this is also a new scene. I do, no, they didn't mix up the, what's it called? I'm pretty sure that the mouth feeding thing was something that happened, but the laptops being switched was not. I don't think. No, it was not a thing. Um, again, I have not read the original in such a long time. I'm going to have to go listen to that. Uh, I haven't had the time to sit and listen to it. But um, if you have the time, go ahead and go sit and listen to it. Because it's like really fucking good. Um, obviously, this one's really good as well. And I'm really enjoying it. Because like, as I said, as I mentioned before, enjoying a new thing while knowing that it's something that I once loved. It's like being able to experience that one show or one fanfic that you really love for the first time yet again. Obviously, this isn't like the first, first time, but it feels as that. And I love it. I love it so much. Okay. But um, mixed passwords. I decided to cut it off at that point because I'm evil. Yeah, that's my reasoning. I'm evil. That's why I cut it off there. Because I'm fucking evil. Um, I'm an evil person, so y'all love me but yeah i cut it off there it's really interesting so far though i'm like really excited and stoked so just i'm my fingers are tw like twirling i'm i'm so happy okay as always my rain drops make sure to eat to sleep drink water take your meds have a wonderful day or night link to my discord server and socials are down in the description subscribe to see more of my content and thank you so much for watching